you know, so bring-ins and the teachings that we had from our parents' backgrounds. Even though the slower Calypso vibes from the old school still holds weight today for those that will know. I felt embarrassed to share my whole music, which I really loved. So what we identified back then was to be cool, was Jamaican. That was it. Step into a forgotten era of DJ tales which are untold. Pirate Chronicles takes you on an epic journey where I can go inside my beats and rhythms and show you how they collide with heart and soul. But against all odds, I find myself in a position where, outside of music, I've found happiness. More than ever being on main stage. So welcome back to our channel where we explore um, different cultural experiences and the impact they have on our lives today. We had soca music playing on most days inside the household, with not much of it ever seen on the TV. It's only what we heard from our parents playing it. And the parties, oh, the parties. The only man who at Radio 1 has got a better suntan than me. What did he say? There was a time in the 80s where this happened with man like Arrow, you know, on your TV in your front room with soca music. That was a mad feeling. Here is Arrow with long time. We knew the house party energy, but when you see your Caribbean favorites on live stage, it's a next level. When you know about Trinidad, home of carnival, the energy was just electric and it was always in top gear with countless hits like that sound that just resonated with our spirits from the ancestors come on it was just something that got you involved in a different way you can hear an intro and from that you saw your elders just freak out with some vibes and energy no matter where you was they will bust out with some serious wine and then it was just the norm to us but when we went outside, it was nothing like that. They knew nothing about what happens inside the household parties. Then as a youngster coming up in the scene of my musical fields, then I got to react to some of my favorites. The energy was unreal. I've said it before in one of the episodes growing up um, in the 70s and 80s and the, and the 90s, of course, in a Caribbean background was a lot different to the way we live today because lifestyle is different, cultural beliefs are different, uh, digital world came and took over and brainwashed everybody, you know, so the upbringings and the teachings that we had from our parents' backgrounds, which come from their parents and our, you know, our grandparents, great grandparents and ancestors um, alike from the Caribbean background uh, was a very strict upbringing to how we was living and that was another level because the teachings from those days are still carry through today for my children and grandchildren so what we're talking about is cultural backgrounds of music uh, which relates to me I've spoken about it before the background that, I, that my parents come from from the West Indies is um, Trinidad and Grenada so with Trinidad at the forefront of Calypso and Soca music being the, the foundation that is what we grew up with in the household coming up from the 80s now we had a very different sort of understanding of what it was like at home and then when we went outside to school and obviously as a kid well you know what do you know uh, you're still trying to figure out and you learn what you learn from your parents one of the things that was very prevalent 
is um, my dad uh, started building his own sound system because again, being a product of the 60s, not saying I'm anywhere born there, just for the record, don't try and figure it out. Because No, my dad used to go to the record shop every week, access to all these different entertainers uh, because it was still quite a niche market back then. Um, and when records came out, they had the connection with the West Indies. So my dad was very specific. So he wanted the Trini stuff and he wanted the Grenadian stuff. And then he'd buy these records, then come home and then rinse them out and, and draw sound. Turn it up really loud. Why? Right? Turn up the music, boy, loud. Yeah, you have to not only uh, listen to it, but you have to feel it. The amount of feeling I will feel, my dad, uh, explain to us that oh yeah look at this boy boy listen to this then we put a radio on um, and the radio was very different from what my dad was playing and what we was aware of the whole sound the whole feel that infusion that that energy and we didn't know what it was about we didn't care about music in that kind of a way because when we was growing up we was waking up to capital radio uh, seven o'clock on the dot the alarm will go off bah, with the most annoying sound and then we'll play capital radio so we knew all the hits and you know like everybody else and, and and our friends at school that's what they knew you know until popular cultures took over like you know the acid house era then going into hardcore and jungle and obviously that was the forefront of our music but the background heritage what was being played at home was always soca Calypso, reggae, lovers rock and soul. Talking about the King Marshall Montano, Big Man, Bungie Garland, Skinny Fabulous, Alison Hines, Patrice Roberts, Test the Band, and of course, my old school Don favorites, who's like the Sanchez of Soka, Baron. Even though the slower Calypso vibes from the old school still holds weight today for those that will know. These songs inspired happiness and some mad crazy high intense energy. But I was too young though. I gonna bust no wine. Go to your bed. However, after seeing and knowing the culture for myself firsthand, I chose to lock it away. Rather than embracing and being proud to mention the word soca outside the house, I was embarrassed and ashamed. Why? So uh, in all honesty, yeah, I'll be real. Like half of the songs that I hear is going to be flashbacks at very best of like you see like the parties and whatnot that these are explained now the most i got to see of them parties there was well from my memory was like the beginning bits turning up maybe eating some food and then boy falling asleep waking up in the morning coming back downstairs and everyone's still at it like and it's like wait what hold on a minute but the actual culture itself is mad because like coming up in school and whatnot as the younger generation in this conversation it's like we were so compact with different cultures and different elements and there was a couple men from the Caribbean but it was a majorly uh, more African thing 100% but it was more of a fact of where you came to school a lot of the let's just say black out of it was the Jamaican music, dancehall music, all of that I'm a fan of, but at the same time, it's like, soca music, I just find personally, doesn't really resonate with me because it wasn't pushed as much as other cultures when we was going to school, let's just say. See, I don't know tunes like... <laughs> Nanny wine, no one's there, brother. <laughs> <laughs> them ones there. That's, that's... But at the same time though, 100% I'll give it his flowers because I do hear the like you was playing the tune earlier and it's like, oh, that what my man did at the beginning of the song and what we, we, we even like the Burner Boy with the Ye song and it was like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's the similar sort of, do you get what I mean? It's, it's man don't need to say nothing. His presence alone and what he's made, the sound that he's making says numbers in itself. But that's as far, like it was so mixed culture that that's as far as it got. Where it was like soca music, especially, never really got a forward to say, like when we was when we was younger, acting like we was grown and we was playing certain songs like I Wayne and stuff like that, and even even Louisa Marks and all of that. We weren't playing soca, like it just wasn't like yeah yeah yeah. Have you heard that? 
that nanny wine and thing. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Didn't it? It weren't really. It weren't that one, didn't it? Like. Tonight the black man feeling the jam, 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 jam. Tonight the black man just feels a boogie, boogie. You see, my parents never shunned away from it. Our heritage was always in our face. They passed down the knowledge taught to them from their elders to our generations to the Western ways, which in fact took us further away from our true identity. Being raised in the UK with a Caribbean parents was a unique experience to say the least at home. The sounds of calypso and soca reggae music filled the air, but outside it was a completely different story. Most of my peers were listening to the same thing like me in the mornings of Capital Radio, to popular British and American music, and I often felt embarrassed to share my whole music, which I really loved, to my friends. We was embarrassed to do it. And I actually do know why at the time, because in our home life, it was like a different life to what we lived outside, to what you chose to show your friends. We had house parties. We had get-togethers like no other. The unity was from all over. You could have family from North, South, East and West of London and they're coming through to your house on the weekend to have a party, to have a get together. Shubbins, as they used to say, a blues dance. And I remember being at those ages when I spoke about in one of the Pirate Chronicles web series episodes and I said, growing up with that heat, that fire, that energy, and the passion. Going back to some of the memories that you can never ever deny or, or forget because Living in those times were amazing, man. It's so all people, when they go to the party, they dance from their car. Yeah. <laughs> from the time they hit the alarm on their car, they are partying. Oh, oh. <laughs> Untold amount of Calypso and Soca with powerful messages and upliftment, where it always seemed like Every artist of the time just wanted the best wine. Carnival was everything with strong connections for our roots, but we was too busy fitting in with what we saw outside the house, which influenced us more. However, moving into my DJ career, I had my own versions of that Caribbean spirit, which was more suppressed than appreciated. I tapped back into that sound with the current legends that I could relate to, like the Marshall Montano and them. And finally, I can understand the levels, which was part of us all with African Caribbean heritage. If you love reggae and dancehall, just know that soca is all from the same tree, just different branches with the same roots. What we identified back then was to be cool was Jamaican. That was it at school. You would use the slang of a Jamaican. The Patois, that's what we spoke if we was going to speak any West Indian kind of an accent and we felt more of um, a connection with that. The music and culture of the Jamaican heritage, i.e. reggae music, and then we had it, our version over in the UK from Lover's Rock era. Um, that's something that is one of the most special genres to me in the forefront above garage above jungle all of that uk lovers rock is my all-time favorite genre of all time so fast forward into now where you have afro beats you have afro pop and this type of sound and tribal and these elements what came first was the talking drums so when people used to beat the drums and that's how they used to communicate back in the days those sounds transferred into uh, music and of course calypso soca was a, um, a a joint derivative of indian music um african music combined there you go. Look at all these different subgenres today, know that the history and all that came from reggae music and calypso and soca. That is a forefront when you listen to the the drum format is what you listen to today. Those snares, but it was musical. They told a story within their lyrics. It was um, pushing the borderlines with some of their lyrics in calypso and soca and you think, oh no, wait, but the vibes, the vibes and energy if you have that passion and spirit and spice and fire inside you like a trini, wow. If you never went to Marshall Monday yet, but find yourself
Look, look how wild that is. Now that's what I'm saying. Another reason why I just stopped doing radio after 30 something years of doing radio my style, my way. When you see shows like that, if you can't perform like that because people would look at you funny or is it a madman or, you know what I mean? They might not accept you in that way, especially coming up from the 80s and 90s. We had to put on facades about who we really are. We didn't respect our culture and the heritage or where we really came from because what was taught in the schools was nothing to do with that. Christopher, who? Columbus and the, what? What's that got to do with me? One major influence that provided me why I have that level of knowledge to be able to have these sort of conversations, even to relate to certain music and all of that, is my dad. If I didn't have my dad, then my dad influenced me in so many ways where it's like, even coming back from a party, Bear Mum will have this sort of similar sort of yeah. thing with their parents, but my dad was a DJ. Even to this day, when we're chilling in the studio, sat and thinking of stuff and filming stuff and all of that, I'm still hearing the songs in the background, isn't it? Like, it keeps it vibrant in our lives. And that's the thing, that's because a major thing music, me, it? especially- If that don't happen, then that, that, then that link breaks instantly dead. However, what does come to the forefront now after all these years is me appreciating where my energy did come from. And when I played and I DJ'd out and it was any genre that I would play in, or obviously my specialist field, it was next level. Where did that fire come from? Because I would take it to next levels and experience more heights than the next man. You would see it in my performances on stage. I recognized it far too late though. A world on the brink of destruction. We're in the middle of an ongoing war. When all hope seems lost. Yo, how old is that? The big guys join the fight. The battle continues. Optimus Batman. Bumbleezy, blood. Yeah, I'm yeah. me. I didn't know you could. We say, fam. Out loud. We say, yeah. oh, sir. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You'll never face anything like this before. Yo, blood, watch this Boom. in your pussy. Prepare for an epic clash. What ends you from, blood? It's about to go. It's about to go. It's about to go. Watch this. Watch this. See it on the biggest screen possible. Watch me on them bullsy. You might come bring that round here, man. Bamba Weezy blood. We say, fam. If you keep your eyes open, life will show you everything. Watch me. Now that's top tier manifestation. The ones that so bubble up. Fire mode. Find us alone, or we find it together. Optimus, Batman, there again. Together. Let's get it. Transformers Rise of the Beast. Out now. Turn it up. I'm never leaving Brooklyn again. On oh, my soul. Music don't invoke the soul and the spirit, then what are we listening to? Just a bunch of noise. There we go. Oh, let's make a tune. Let's go. That's rubbish. It's such rubbish. No thought. No, no, I just done that. And if you're gonna make that's rubbish, we're gonna make money off it. Okay, well then, that's a tune. Uh, well, I'll copyright that right now. Well, there, that's rubbish. So music is an art form, um, and it's an expression of, of of life, and it's an expression of culture, and it's an expression of experience. So the '80s marked a period where cultural uh, assimilation was prevalent and individuals from diverse backgrounds often felt pressured to conform to the dominant cultures of the popular world. The pressures created a conflict of identity for those growing up in the UK with Caribbean roots. Music being a significant expression of our culture played a massive role in this struggle. The music from Trinidad such as Calypso and Soca carried uh, the stories, traditions and rhythms, rhymes that came directly from the Caribbean. However, due to the lack of exposure and understanding it, the wider society in UK, it was often seen as foreign or unfamiliar to many people, including those with Caribbean backgrounds like me. This created a sense of uh, disconnection and a desire to distance oneself from their own culture, which is mad. I can relate to these experiences personally. Um, 
growing up, I too felt torn between embarrassing, feeling embarrassed from the Caribbean heritage by trying to fit in with my peers. Um, the music that played at home represented a beautiful culture, rich in history and tradition, um, but it wasn't what my friends knew and this was not what they listened to and they would ever understand it took time and self-reflection to truly appreciate and embrace the music and culture that shaped our upbringing History, when the fight we don't, we don't find our way, not getting up Testing. That wraps up today's episode, exploring the impact of growing up in the 80s and 90s with Caribbean parents who introduced us to the vibrant sounds of soca music. Throughout our journey, we discovered that despite the rich cultural heritage that soca music represents, we often faced an identity crisis. The influence of popular music uh, culture of the mainstream made it challenging for us to fully embrace and appreciate the music that resonated with our Caribbean roots. However, as time passed and cultural uh, perspectives evolved, we have come to realize the importance of embracing our uh, heritage, including the music that shaped our upbringing. Soca music is not just a genre, it's a symbol of resilience, joy, and celebration within the Caribbean culture. By reconnecting with soca music, we're not only honor our Caribbean roots, but also find a sense of pride and belonging. It's a reminder that our cultural identity is something to be cherished and celebrated, even in the face of external influences. So let us strive to preserve and promote the diverse music and culture traditions that make us who we are today. Through understanding and embracing our heritage, we can create a more inclusive society where everyone's unique backgrounds are appreciated and celebrated. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode and it's inspiring to you um, as we go back and realize how great our cultures really are. Uh, join us next time as we continue to explore uh, the rich tapestry of cultures within all music genres. Right here on the Mad React Show, it could be reacted to tape packs, live footage from myself in clubs in the past, or um, music and traditions that mean something to us today. So do stay tuned for more. Holler at your boy. Links are down below in the description and make sure to like, comment and subscribe it's very important that you subscribe hit the button make sure you're signed into your account man because enough people don't do that and you go through when you click on the link in bio and it goes through to the desktop version and you're not signed in make sure you're signed in to subscribe so it means something and we can get the algorithm popping right really appreciate your time and effort this is yours truly madness kma spell it correct don't get it twisted you're done know how it goes tick to test it i'm out